I'm going to be reading several places from the Bible tonight. First, first Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19 and 20. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto the wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, they speak not according to this word. It's because they got no light in them. I'm going to go ahead and give the title. It's called Beware. I feel very strongly impressed to preach this. It reminds me of the book of Jude, which probably, I don't know all the verses I'm going to be reading. I just feel led to tell somebody this and there may be some others, more than one. I have no idea. Today, a memory came back. Go to Matthew chapter 7, please. I'm getting ready to read that here in a minute. I shared it with some people. and I want to tell you, it was a very painful experience in my life back in 1986. As I told some, I was out of the will of God. I should have left West Virginia probably shortly after graduating from export. That would have been 1985. I really should have. I won't go in detail. Hurt feelings is all I'll say, and I'll drop it there. But tonight, as a result of staying in Elkins for nearly two years after graduating, I feel I got out of the will of God. And I'll be honest with you, I regret doing that. I'm going to tell you, tonight, you need to be in God's will. You need to be in the center of God's will. You need to be seeking God daily for His will. Beware! Beware! That's my message. I'll go ahead and read Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Every corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Beware. Beware. That's my title. Back during that time, there was a man I'd been dealing with some time. He was involved in drugs. I knew the guy when I was a sinner. Involved in drugs too. This guy made a profession of salvation, but let me tell you, first off, the man, and I'm not saying because the man was a false prophet, he didn't really get saved, but I'm going to tell you something. It helps if you have a real man of God to pray with you. I'm going to say that. I believe it's possible because I've heard a ballot about a group of people that got saved. And I understand the man that was preaching to him. This back in the 1800s was a horse thief. Later on, they went to D.L. Moody, and they asked him, Moody, did we get saved? That man turned out to be a crook. He turned out to be a hypocrite. I like what D.L. Moody said to those people. He said, who saved you? Did that preacher save you, or did the Lord save you? Now, that wasn't the real reason why I don't believe this man got saved. There was absolutely no change in his heart. He uh, was still involved in drugs to the best of my knowledge, and he was still involved in fornication and sins like that. He went through a motion, but there was no fruit in his life. I really don't want to discuss a lot. I'd rather not say a lot of the things that went on. But at that time, because I was out of the will of God, I believe the devil knew that. Let me explain. I'm going to go ahead. I haven't even got this 
all the verses marked. I should, but you know how it is. When you're just going to preach something the Lord gave you, like this. You just want to follow what the Lord says. Acts chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who show unto us the way of salvation. I believe the devil knows whether you're in God's will or out of God's will. I believe that woman actually knew that these servants were real, these Paul and Silas and those men really were servants of God. And I believe she really could tell. But I believe that whole time, I believe Paul and Silas and the others were praying for that woman. They were just waiting for the ideal time to deal with her. And in verse 18, and this she did many days. It could have been a whole year. Don't say, oh, he will never let go and hold it. And the next time something happens like that, it takes you a whole year to get through it. Then you're, people could say the same thing about you. Come on. I believe sometimes men of God have to act wisely. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. They know. That night, that for a while, I was followed around by this, this uh, guy who called himself an exhorter. And I tell you, it was a nightmarish experience. And I believe God wants me to do this to tell you, beware, beware, beware. Don't let that man, don't let that woman deceive you who's following you around, telling you out God's will. You may be out God's will, you may not. That doesn't even matter. It's a mute point if the devil's following you around. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion who walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Who resists steadfast in the faith? Know that the same afflictions are accomplished by your brethren in the world. I knew this man had some type of demon in him. He, I even understand from another preacher who had dealt with him. This man was one time involved in Satanism. He was one time involved in Mormonism. He was involved in different occult practices. I believe he did demons cast out according to Mark chapter 16, 17 and 18 in my name. Shall they cast out devils? He told me. He went to a tent revival. I forget if it was before this or after this. And said the man tried to cast demons out of him. I believe it. I believe the man had him in him. And he needed to be delivered. And it was just the devil manifesting himself trying to destroy this man. He didn't just stop at saying I was out of the will of God. Amen. I should have known. I should have just said, Lord, I believe you want me to go to Virginia. And he moved me there. I got there finally, either lap part, lap part of June. 1987, I moved out that way. I believe God was in that move. I should just move two years earlier. But this man followed me around and finally just got so bad where I just had to say, listen, I'm, I just had to, you know, I just got upset. I'll just be honest with you. And I finally just more or less wouldn't have anything to do with him. I would not answer the phone. I would ignore him. I'd talk around in circles. I tried everything in my power to keep that man from stalking me. Yeah, he would follow me right to the church. He walked there. I'm telling you, there's demons in this world trying to destroy you. And I believe there's some people listening to people like that out there right now. If they're not living right, by their fruit you shall know them. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and go to Galatians chapter 5. Amen. I believe that with all my heart that I'm dealing with somebody tonight. The Lord really burdened me. I was going to preach a message about Pentecost. I was going to preach about revival. I was going to preach about, uh, about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I believe God told me to preach this. Beware. 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 The title's beware. 
Because I believe somebody out there is listening to some people who are full of ungodly spirits. The Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. That right there should be a warning. Uncleanness, by the way, that's, includes homosexuality. Lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Variance, emulation, emulations, emulations, ah, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies. They preach in sound doctrine. Beware if they're not. Beware if they're not preaching sound doctrine. Amen. Beware if they're preaching anything but Jesus is the absolute way to heaven and nothing else. Beware, 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 beware. Heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have uh, also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Tonight, beware. Some of you are hearing people tell you to go wrong directions. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Seek the Lord God. Get out His Word and study it. Those people are sent to destroy your soul. The thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and destroy. I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. John 10.10 10. I really believe the Lord has told me to tell you this. Don't listen to that guy. Don't listen to that lady who's trying to tell you to go contrary to the book. Don't tell them. That, 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 don't listen to them. Get away as fast as you can because I believe the devil has marked you to destroy you. I believe that's exactly what was happening then. I finally, he kept following me around finally one night. I won't go into all the details. There was a confrontation. I had to really, I had to, re, he, we talked later on the phone and he agreed and he did not follow me around anymore. He stopped. I may have had a couple minor little incidents after that, but after that, he lived for over 20 years and he finally died. In fact, the only reason I'm telling you this tonight is because I know the man's dead. I just hope he made things right before he died. That's all I'm going to say. His mom's died, his dad's died too, so I feel sort of a freedom to tell this. Tonight, I believe that there's people being sent in your path to tell you not to go the right way and you may be listening to them if their fruit is not lined up the bible says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such as no law if they have if they're preaching sound doctrine bible doctrine if they're living a god fear and holy life yes listen be care amen that's one thing. If they're not living, I'm going to tell you something else. First Corinthians chapter 5 says, if any says they're a brother, I'm going to go ahead and read it. I just feel impressed to tell some people this. Don't listen to that person. Don't listen to that person who's leading you wrong. Don't listen to him. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I wrote unto you an epistle. Mark, First Corinthians 5 verse 9. Not the company of fornicators, yet not all the gift fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then you must needs go out of the world. But I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or drunkard, or extortioner, or such a one, know not to eat. For what have I do to judge them that are without? Do you not judge them that are within? But them that were without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. You're going to have to watch it in this hour. There's a lot of deception. How do I avoid the deception? I read earlier. Take heed to the word. Follow the word. 
I saw a poster the other day, a little cartoon actually. This man was praying. He said, Lord, speak to me. You know what the Lord did? He sent him a Bible. <laughs> I'm telling you tonight. Amen. How shall the young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to thy word. Psalm 119, verse 9. Psalm 119, verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Tonight, we need to take heed to the word. The Bible says, Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not also wither. I forget the rest. Ouch. What can I tell you? Take heed to the word. Take heed to yourself. Take heed to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Stay as close to God as you can. If there's something God's told you to do and you fail to do it, pray, get right, and go do it. I remember that time when I finally got to Virginia in 1987. Thank God the Lord brought me there. I thank God that the Lord brought me to Virginia away from all that. And tonight I'm thankful that God got me out of some of the things that was going on. I'll tell you what, my life's never been the same since. Thanks to me moving to Virginia, God sent the right lady in my wife, life. Thanks to, she finally passed away and he sent me another and she finally passed away. Thanks to that, I had an 11 year experience pastoring a church from 1989 to 2000. Thanks to that, God done a lot of works in me. He's helped me now to do a lot of writing. He's helped me do more preaching. And I'll tell you tonight, if you can just get away from those people trying to pull you away from God, those exhorters, that's all I can tell you. Now, I believe in being an exhorter in the sense of really preaching to you. But somebody starts giving you special revelations, and they don't line up with this book. Walk away. Get away as fast as you can. Because you may be down, heading down the road of destruction. I don't know who you are. It may be several people. But tonight, if God is dealing with you, showing you somebody who's been trying to destroy you spiritually, don't let that person destroy you. Don't let that person destroy you. Because I'll tell you what, tonight, what shall profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I don't know why the Lord keeps impressing me to tell about that exhorter, that false prophet, that devil-possessed man. But he's impressed me to do it twice today. I believe somebody really needs to hear this. Tonight, just repent of anything you've done wrong. If you're out of God's will, just commit yourself back to his will and let him bring you back. I'll tell you what I like. One thing I like about the book of Jonah, it may not always be that easy. Why? He was in a well right well. I think sometimes getting back in the center of God's will can be harder than a well ride. I can tell you that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. As long as you're in God's will, you got God's favor. And those people who are trying to lead you wrong, those people who are not living right, those people who are involved in deep immorality, those people who are still using drugs, those people who are still drinking, still party and even though they're saying they're christians you don't need them you need a good group of god-fearing men and women who love god and seek to live a life of holiness without which no man shall see the lord tonight i want to challenge y'all 
If there's something like this happening, pray and break away from those people. It'll be for your own benefit. It'll be for your own benefit as well as the benefit of the kingdom of God. I tell you tonight, I'm not saying to hate those people, but sometimes the best thing to do is remove yourself as far as you can from certain people. My own life, that's been the best thing for me. This is a different situation, a different route the, man, the person went. A certain individual was abusing me mentally, emotionally a couple years ago. Thank God they finally kicked me out of, my li out of their life. You know what I say? That was the greatest thing they could have done because thanks to that, God's been doing some healing in this man's life. And I'll tell you something. You're better off without certain people. You're better off without that person who keeps pulling you down spiritually every step of the way, who fights you every way, step of the way, who's trying to destroy your life and destroy your ministry, trying to make you an emotional basket case. That's why when that person told me to leave them alone, they, they, they threatened me with legal action. <laughs> I think they were just doing, use a little psychology on me. But thanks to that, I've decided they told me to get lost getting lost <laughs> though I'm getting found because the truth of the matter is I'm getting closer to God thanks to that tonight beware 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 God bless you